right, so let's get to working. Um, so let's ex let me explain to you guys what Machina actually is. Machina is two different things. You have the hardware component, and then you have the software. The software is Machina 2.0. That's the software, and that software is compatible to every single controller that we have that we sell. So if you have a Mark I and you have a Micro and you have a Studio, they're all using this exact software. So, you know, someone saying, oh, I'm going to get the Studio to step it up to the next whatever, you still have the same software. So the first thing I would tell people to do um, for the beginners, the people that know absolutely nothing, I'm going to go through every single part of the software. And um, you guys who are a little more advanced, just kind of hang in there please because you know if you don't know the software using the hardware is kind of you're kind you're lost pretty much um machina studio is not a daw it's not replacing a daw it's a production unit and it's a, it's a hybrid it works with t it works together so if i disconnected the hardware and i just had the software open it will still work so the brain is inside of the computer so there's no way to plug in Machina Studio and actually work with it without the computer, just to get that, that out of the way. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you guys is the browser. So the browser is where everything lives. If you are new to production and you know nothing at all about Machina, I would advise that you open up the project folders. This first tab here is a project tab. That tab takes you to pre-recorded songs and just you know, you can open it up and see songs that uh, come with the software and you can see how different genres of songs are set up and what effects they're using and where everything lives. Um, that's what this first tab is. And the browser, this would be the browser section. You go in and out of the browser using the mic magnifying glass there. So in the projects, I'm going to click on projects you'll see all my little tabs there. Uh, Native Instruments also has expansion packs with different genres of music, you know, different styles of music. The one thing that NI has that is killer are the sounds. I mean, ultimately, we're here to make music. You want your sounds to bang. You want them to sound pristine, be the best. We want to make records, you know. So the, the sounds that come for Machina are stellar. And then in every pack, we have pre-made songs that you can audition so you can listen to hear what machine it has to offer. So you have that in the project file here. Um, the next tab we have here is the group tab. Inside of groups, basically, the groups consist of 16 sounds. Each pad represents the 16 sounds. So these slots that you see here, 1 through 16, correspond with the pads on the hardware. So when you go to this tab and you hit, you know, you go to all groups, groups pretty much load up drum kits or kits that are made. So when you load up a group, 16 sounds are going to load up. So if I clicked on group here, if you, you know, if you're a first, you know, machine buyer, you're only going to have the machine expansion. So this is what you're going to see. And you're going to have a drum kit. So when you go to group, remember that groups are you're going to load up 16 sounds in one shot. So if I came here and I clicked on the 909, it's going to load up all 16. You're going to see all 16. You guys can't see the colors from there, but all 16 pads are loaded up. So you get your kick, your snare, your hi-hat, and that's where all your kits live. Does everybody understand that? OK. So um, another misconception about Machina, people think that Machine is just a drum machine. It is not. We have sounds as well, where you can load sounds up. You can create, you know, bass sounds, and this is where that lives. You click on this tab, and it brings you to all sounds. Now, the way that Machine is set up is you have eight. You, well, we used to have eight groups in 1.8. Now we have unlimited groups in 2.0. 2.0 is the new software, so you have unlimited groups. Basically, you can load up as many sounds on each group and just Keep going and going, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, so now with this this tab, you have your sounds. Basically, the way to hear your sounds is you want to bring them into groups. So if I click on this tab here, or if I came to the hardware, 
and I clicked on this C button, it will create a group for me. And if you look in the software, you'll see that another group was created. You guys following? Okay. So we're back to group B. Now I'm in group B, and I go to my sounds tab, and then I said, okay, I want to go to instruments. Once I click on instruments, you're going to see I have different options here. I have my bass, my chorus, my guitar, my keys, my leads, my organs. So if I decided I wanted to load up a bunch of keys, I got my drums on group A. Group B, I decided I wanted to load up a couple of keys. So I'm going to double click on group B. I'm going to name it keys because I want to start uh, putting things in order. So I go to keys, and then I'll come here and pick a patch. And I might choose, okay, grand, ball grand, grab that, and I would drop it into the sound slot. So you guys saw how I did that, right? Okay, the minute I drop that into a sound slot, automatically you start seeing all these different options that you have for that sound. And then it's the same thing with the hardware. If you come to the hardware, you'll see it right here in the hardware. And I could have easily, you know, picked a blank pad on the hardware, hit shift browse, and it takes me to the sounds inside of my browser as well. So I can do that in the hardware also. Come here. So now I have 16 pads of different keys that I can load up in this one group. So, okay, I decided to load up, you know, this keyboard sound, and I want to load this guy up, then I want to grab these keys, load that up, and then now I have three different keys. Inside of Machina, if you have a controller plugged into your computer, like any other DAW, I mean, it sees the controller, and automatically your keys are mapped on the controller. But if you don't have a controller, a keyboard controller and you have just the machina you can also go into keyboard mode inside of the hardware so I come here and I have pad mode so I click on pad mode and I click keyboard here and automatically you notice all my notes are lined up so you have C3 through C4 and then if I want to change my octaves they're right here so if you look there same concept so you can go up and down the octaves with keyboard mode. And then there's shortcuts, of course. If I highlight that and I hit shift pad mode, it takes me into keyboard mode. Um, if I don't want to use the hardware and I want to come to the software and go to keyboard mode, I would click on this little icon here. And it takes me to the piano roll page. You guys are familiar with the piano roll page, correct? So if I play different notes here, you'll see me playing the notes. You know, if I came to the controller, it'd be the same deal. You'd see it in there. Everybody understand that? Okay. So group B would be my keys. Now I want to go to group C and load up uh, some guitar sounds. And I'll come here and hit guitar. It's the same thing. I could either, you know, highlight sound, grab that, drag and drop it, or do the same thing with the controller. Anybody have any questions? Yes. When using it as a keyboard, there's only so many pads versus so many keys. I mean, yes. you just have to just transpose it a lot. Yes, we go to the octaves. I went to shift pad. I went into keyboard mode. And if you look on the right, I'm sorry. If you look on the right side of my screen, if you look up here in this portion right here, it says octave. And I can change my octaves and keep going up or go down the scale. And that's where I would go up and down the scale. Or I would use the controller and go up and down the scale there. You can hit all, all 88 keys. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you guys notice, we're going to go back to the, to the drum kit. I'm going to go back to group A. And we're gonna, I'm going to skip this section really quick because I'm going to go back to that and explain why. So we're going to click here. We're going to go to effects. So I know somebody in here made a question, had a question about mixing and effects and this is where all the effects live also so we also have effects so if someone is brand new and they don't understand compressors and they don't understand reverbs the presets are set up in a way where you can learn you know so if I have a kick here and I click on that kick and this is where the sampler section is this plus sign underneath that is where you would bring your effects 
So for someone who has no idea about compressing or anything like that, I'm going to go to the factory um, effects that are available. And um, let's just say I want to go to my dynamics. I click on dynamics, and then it opens up another f section here. And let's say we have the single band compressor. So we go to the single band compressor, and there's a standard compressor. So I'm going to grab this patch, and I'm going to drop it on there. So now, for someone who doesn't know about compression, now you're looking at the screen, and you see threshold, you see amount, you see attack, you know, release. And when you, press the, when you hit the kick, now you can hear what that setting actually means and what it does. And what what the response is on that. If I grab Ultra and I drag it and put it on there, you'll see that the settings changed. And so now for someone who doesn't know anything about compression, now you're saying, oh, okay, okay, so if my threshold's here and my release is here, my gain is here, this is what this sounds like and this is what it does. Any questions about that? So on the left, do you need the standard one, two, and Ultra or just settings? Yeah, those are settings, those are presets. The, it's, it's the big, it, it's the setting that starts you off, but you can change that. You come in and you can change your threshold. You can change anything that you put in there, but it gives you a standard. So if you say, hey, I want an ultra compression, that's where you would load it in and hear what that sound, what does that actually mean? You know, um, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say none, and we're going to go to reverb, and I'll show you more. So we're here in reverb. And inside a reverb, you have plates, you have room. So if I click on room, these are all the different room sizes. So if I said big and bright, and I grab this guy and I drop that on there, that's what big and bright is going to sound like. You know, if I grab, you know, this patch here, and that's what that's going to sound like, which is com completely different. And then I could change the size. I could come here and change the size. I come here and change the mix of it. You guys following that? Yes. If you change the um, settings on the compressor and you like the, the changes that you made, how do you save that? Yeah, you can save that as well. You could come here and save any setting. You could come and save your kits. We'll, we'll go over that also. So I just wanted you guys to know where everything lives. Okay, so you know your effects are here. These are your options. You have gauge. You have filters. You have delays. You have EQs. You have compressors. You know, these are all the different things that you have inside a machina. And these are all the options. And you play with them. You drag and drop them. You listen to them. You play with the knobs. And that's what the hardware is for. You know, you come here. You're playing with the knobs. You're seeing what it feels like. You're not just stuck in the computer looking at numbers and trying to figure out what those numbers actually mean. What does it feel like? You know, you come here. You're touching the knobs. You're seeing what that feels like. Any other questions? Yes. Is there a limit? No. You can do as many plugins. Yes. Yes. Effects, yeah. Um, now, also, uh, so those are effects. Um, in terms of, so we're going to go to a new group. I'm going to create a new group, and I'm going to go to this guy here. And, this yes. Third-party uh, effects? Yes. Like I'll show you that. Yes, I'll show you. Uh-huh. So this line here, this is, uh, let me close that. These are your samples. So in the beginning, when I loaded up when I load up the kit, you notice that I load up all 16 pads, and I load up the kits that they gave me. But if I want my own kits and I want to create my own drum kits, I come here to the samples. I'll click on samples, and of course you're going to see all my expansion packs here, and I can pick from either one of those expansion packs, and I might have a drum kit in this expansion pack, a kit, a snare, hi hat, or something that I want from different packs. I can just grab them from this section here. So I'm going to go to Machina, and I'm going to grab drums. When I go to drums, you see I'll have kick. And then I can go to kick, and then I can then audition. I could turn that on and off. And I can audition all the different kicks. So if I decide, OK, I want this kick, I drag this kick here. And then I said, OK, I want to get a snare. Now I'm in the snares. Now I'm listening to the snares. grab a snare, drop a snare here, so forth and so on. So now I can create my own drum kits in here. Once I do that, I can right click right here, save with samples. And then I can create my own drum kits. So 
if I created a drum kit and you're like, Stoney, I love that kit you did on that record, I can give you the folder with the patch, with the kits, just the way that I made it. And then once I save that inside of Machina, I come here to this little man, this little head, and whatever drum kits that I save will be in my user section. So you have the NI section, which are your 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 you know pre-made uh, patches and that come with the expansions, and then you've got your patches and your expansions that you're saving and that you're sharing. So everybody's clear about that, correct? Yes. When you if you were to send me that that uh, folder, would that be some sort of format that only Machina understands? Or Absolutely. Or? Yes. That would be the group patch, and you would only load up it load up in your group. But if I wanted to use that say in, in Pro Tools or something, I would just have to load that in. It would still be, it wouldn't be. A yes, format. you would load you would load Machina into Pro Tools as a VST well as a RTAS as a RTAS and AAX. Also, Machina works inside of every DAW. You know, inside of Logic, it's an audio unit. AU inside of Pro Tools is we have RTAS, we have AAX, and inside of Ableton, it would be VST or audio unit as well. Yeah, and Cubase and you know, so we have VST audio unit, RTAS, A AAX. And so any any track that I would make here inside of machine that's standalone without it being loaded up as a VST, I can actually save it, remember the tempo, save the project, open up Ableton Logic or Pro Tools. I can open the song up inside of any DAW and then I would change the tempo of the actual DAW so that it can be the same tempo because you know you're slaving to the DAW so your DAW would be your master so if this is 80 BPMs here I would make Ableton 80 BPMs or Logic 80 BPMs and then hit play and it it should follow everybody clear about that okay cool so also um, you know you've got people that use other you know like formats and other you know drum machines and you know EXS and you might you know be in Logic and you have all your EXS kits set up the way you want it you can actually come into your file section here which is your personal space so if I came here and I went to my passport drive and I come here and I double click on that sorry beach ball so these are my personal drums so if I came in here and I wanted to load uh, these kicks I can do that also I can get you know kicks from outside sources and I can come in here and grab these guys and drag and drop same concept you know as the you know as the pre-made patches same concept and I can make kits for Machina also so if I have you know my own mind drum kits or uh, yeah anything you know, and I want to come in and put the sounds inside of Machina and set my groups. This I could do that as well. So if I was using an older drum machine, and you know, it also you know, it opens up MPC extension files too. So if you had that and you have a PGM file or AKP file, is everybody familiar with that AKP or PGM extensions? The old beat makers, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you can actually open up. You can go to the patch, double click, and Machina opens that up the same way you, you made it. Yeah, and it opens up the key groups as well. So if you have like any rows or any other key groups that you made in other programs, it will open it up. Yeah. Pardon? No, you can't, unfortunately. Good question. I like that. So now we want to make music, right? So we have this section here, which is the pattern section. This is where you will create pattern. Some people say patterns. Some people say sequences. Inside of Machina, it's patterns. So you come here. There's a pattern button on the hardware. And this is where you create your patterns. So for the newbies, when you're putting your songs together, you get all your sounds inside of these pad these pads, and now you want to create a pattern. You want to put an idea together. Uh, this section is where that lives. This is where you would begin your patterns. So you come here to the hardware, you hit pattern, you hit a pad, and it creates a pattern. If you notice, it says pattern one now. 
if I wanted to do it from the software, I would click here and I would just hit one of these guys, pattern two, pattern three, pattern four. So you guys follow what I just did. Okay. So for each group, you have different patterns. So each group, you have to create a pattern for each group in order to sequence. So you got rid of all the patterns across the top of the first, from 1.8? It's simpler now, right? Yes. Yeah. It's the same concept. Okay. It's the same concept, but it's here instead. And then you can also, also look at these sounds in, in a pad mode also. You can also click on that and, and look at it that way. I like looking at it with the sound slot because I want to see the names of everything instead of the pads. But this is where you would set up your pads. So when I go to this kick here, this kick automatically we have like settings inside of um, inside of Machina where you can go and start like sound designing. So if I have this kick like this, I can come here through the different pages. You're watching my hands? As I'm moving this, you can see the page is moving. So this is where you would change your polyphony. You would come here. You would just change your polyphony from here. This is where you would come and change, tune your kicks. You know, and this is where you set your ADSR or your one shots. Everybody familiar with ADSR and one shot? No. Okay. One shot you're usually using with your drums. ADSR is more for like if you want to shape the sound. With ADSR, we can come here into modul the modulation, the LFOs, and we could change the shape of the actual sample. But it has to be on ADSR. If it's on one shot, it's just one shot. It'll just play the, the kick as is. Okay? Any questions? Okay, this is where your filter, you can come here and turn your filters on and off. Filters live there. Also, we have a cool engine mode here where you can make this MPC style engine or SP1200 engine. Anyone who's ever used SP1200, in the back of the SP1200 back in the days, you had like different filter options. So it was like one through eight, channels one and two were like your highs and your threes and fours were like your mids, and then the back ex outputs were like just completely filtered out. So we have that in here. So if I came here to the kick and I went to low LM, it changes the actual feel and the sound of that kit. So we have different engines inside of Machina as well. All right, so that's on a sound level. So now if I have a pattern in here, so this is where I would build my patterns, right? Um, now, you see so you know how I showed you guys the effects on the kick and the snare on each individual sound. So you see sound. So I know you guys are wondering, okay, this is a group. So if I click on the group section here, if I put a reverb or a sound or drag any effect onto this plus sign, it's going to affect the entire group. So if I have drums going and I want to affect the whole group, I'll come here and I'll you know, grab a compressor or, you know, and then drop it onto the group. So I come here, do the same thing. It's the same concept. Um, go back here to effects, then machine. And I would come here and grab this guy and put it here. So now the whole group is being affected. You guys following me? Yeah. And then the master, you know, it's the same same deal. So now you could actually put effects and create a chain for your mastering as well, which is fantastic. So, um, okay, so let me just show you guys really quick also. I'm going to go to a blank group. Come down here. Okay. Um, also, the browser section is for presets. So if they're presets, you're going to load your presets up from the browser section. But if you don't want the compressor presets and you want to just load, you know, a raw, you know, a raw, uh, like a raw setting of anything, you come to the plus sign on a blank sound, on a blank sound, and you click on that, you can load up 
native instruments, VSTs, you can load up external VSTs. This is where that would happen. We hit external. So if I came here and I wanted to load up, um, let me load something up here. Uh, <laughs> so if I came here and I wanted to load up Nexus, I would come here and load Nexus, and it would be the same, same concept. So I could load up Nexus in here and go and use, you know, as many plugins. And the same deal with the plugins. I could come in here and load up external effects as well. I can load up the native instruments effects. I can go to here and load up guitar rig effects. Or I could just grab one of these guys that's already in here. Or I can come here to my master tab, click on this guy, go to external, and hear my waves. So if I want to come here and load up an L2, an L2 is a, is a limiter for you guys who are new. You load up an L2, I can load up, you know, any one of these guys. These are my waves. And I can put that on my master. So for the guys who use Pro Tools and you have to have that L2 on your master bus, you can put it on here also, even before you start making your tracks. Is that the only way to get to your third-party plugins? No, you can do it through the hardware. I mean, but what about the, the browser one? Did you get it through there, too? If you were Not if you want it raw. The point, the reason why I showed it this way is because this is the raw setting. Yeah. No, it's not in here. Anything that's in the browser are presets. So if I came here and I clicked on this guy and I went to Native Instruments and I wanted to load up battery, it's going to load up battery and I'm not going to have any settings. It's going to just be the raw, the raw setting. So if I came here... Let me go back here to sound. And I have a sampler here. And I grabbed this plus sign, and I went to this compressor and loaded the compressor. That's just it raw with, without the presets. But if I came here and grabbed Ultra and dropped it on there, you'll see that the settings just changed. You following me? Yeah. Yes? All right, so real quick, um, how do you toggle between those two uh, effects on there? What do you mean? Like, can you, you can add more than one effect on that? Yes. Like, how do you pull up that window so you can, like, start tweaking things? Like, can you toggle between two different effects and get those parameters up there? Yeah, I mean, if, I, if this plus sign is here and I click on this guy and I load an effect up, or if I come here and I go to an EQ and I grab this guy and I drop it on here, it, whatever's highlighted is what you're going to see. Now, if I want to toggle through this guy, I can come here and just go to Compressor and then I'll see my settings here and go here to filter. Or I can come here and hit shift and that takes me to the next section. Um, so I'm gonna get to that. So we're here in the patterns. Okay, patterns are like, so we have our groups, right? Our groups have 16 sounds that live, 16 sounds live in the groups. So you have your patterns and your patterns live the scene, patterns live in the scenes. So it's it, that's you know that's how I can explain. It's like it houses the the patterns. So when you're doing your songs, your patterns live inside of the scenes. So if I came here to scenes, and then you can name all the stuff. I can come here to scenes and make this intro. So notes live in the patterns. And patterns live in the patterns. Absolutely, yes. Notes live in the patterns. Patterns live in the scenes. Everybody got that concept? So when you're talking about scenes. You have to remember the scenes exist based on the patterns that you put in them. And then the patterns are based on what you make in the pattern. So you have to create patterns in order to make scenes. And then in the scenes, you will insert the patterns and create the, fo the format the way you want to do it, which we're going to go through. Um, the best part of 2.0 to me, I mean, and the new improvement that they made is um, we have a mixer now. You know, so if I click on this guy, we have a mixer now. So for all the guys, and you open up your I.O., your plugins, your auxiliaries. So for all the old, you know, machina users, uh, this is the, the mixer section here. And then also on the hardware, you have a mix section as well. So if you click on mix, you can see all, everything here on the mixer as well. So these knobs here control your levels. And you can toggle between looking at the groups or you can toggle between looking at each individual channel per group. So if I go here to this group and I hit group B, 
I hit group C, and this is how I go through the groups. Or I can come up here and toggle from up here. You guys following? So that's how you go in and out of the mixer. And then I can, this could just be on the pattern page for me here. And then I can keep the mixer on the screen. So it's separate. You can actually, you know, I can come back here and I can shift navigate here. I can shift navigate and toggle between the screens from my hardware. So I could be in here and I want to look at the mixer. I can just come here and look at the mixer, you know. And then the other cool part now is you can actually control everything with this master section. And when I make a track, I'll show you guys how to do that. And then the studio, what makes the studio amazing is that in the Mark II, you know, you've got your two screens, but with the studio, I can now come and hit arrange and go to pattern and see everything that's on my screen on the hardware as well. Yes? It almost feels like you don't need a doll. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you need a doll to cut vocals. You know what I'm saying? But like for everything, everything is in here that you need to make your record to create. You know, in order, you know, for me to go to a DAW, I mean, there's not much that I do when I go to my DAW, honestly. I get it all done in here. And you're just importing the specific scenes or whatever to fit the, the tracks? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, the studio thing you were saying was a cool feature. I kind of missed. Wait. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go over it again. Um, inside the studio, now we can go to Arrange and you can see your patterns and everything you're doing right here on the studio. So I never have to look at my computer screen ever. So, and then I can come here to scenes and I can look at my scenes and I can scroll in and out and look at my different scenes. And we'll, you'll see more of it as I create a track. You'll see what that looks like. You may not be able to answer this, but when you were on the mixer page in the software, yes. you could see the sound design that you were doing. Yes. Are there plans or you may not know, to move some of that into one of those windows as well. Some of what into the windows? So you have your two windows on machine, right? Yep. So let's say you want to move what, the sampler down there. Like right now, you can't you can't see that in the machine, right? What, what do you mean? Sampler area? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sampler area. Right. You can't that's see that? A, that's another section. Yeah, this is the mixer page. Yeah, but I'm saying mixer is like up at the top. Down below, you have the sampler. Yes. Can you see that on machine? What, in the hardware? In the hardware, yeah. No. So that's, well, no, hardware no, you can. Is that, is that something that can be done, or maybe it just can't be done, or you don't know? I'm, I'm not sure, sweetheart. I mean, why would you want to look at it on the on the hardware? On the, hardware? the thing I'm thinking, you could have a Mac, if you're doing a live set, you could have a Mac Mini hooked up without the need for display at all. Right. You could see everything. But if you go into sampling here, you know, if you go into the sampling page, I'm gonna come out of there. If you go into the sampling page, you can see the sampling page here on the hardware. I mean, I don't have the hardware, so. Yeah. So if I, you know, if I zoomed in and out here, you could see everything here, and it's all color coded as well. So I can zoom in and zoom out and see everything right here. But I know what you're saying. What you're saying is you want to be able to see it. If I came here to shift navigate, but as you can see on the hardware, when I go shift navigate and I go to the mixer screen on the software, it doesn't change the mixer screen on the hardware, and it's not like. It's not the traditional mixer either. It's the mixer for Machina. So if you want to come in here, you know, on the 1.8, you didn't have a screen like this. You couldn't see your levels and your faders. So here, you have the option to hit the kick here, and you can control your fader from fader one. Or I can come here to my jog wheel, turn this up and down. Or I can come here, hit sound, and turn this up and down here. So you've got, like, different options on how to control and that's the cool part about having the studio. You can find your workflow. So if you're someone who likes the jog wheel, you can jog wheel, go to the next, you know, go to the next thing here, pan your stuff, and use the jog wheel for everything. And select whatever, and do it like that, or just go through different tracks and jump that way. But when I'm in the mixer here, it's just to look at the faders. And then here, this to me is like a really quick reference, you know, so if I have a sample in here and I just want to do a quick edit, I can grab that and just make a really quick edit here also. Yeah. Or if, you know, if I want to just do something really quick here, but usually I'll do it right here. I'll do it right here on the screen, on the hardware.
very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool and until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since, since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail. We, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really helped me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.